Do orange cats really only have one brain cell? Why do Siamese cats change colour as they grow up? Why are black cats lucky in Japan, but unlucky in the West? And why does every single tabby cat have an M shape on their forehead? Today we're decoding the genetics, the myths, and the personalities behind every cat colour. We'll start with the default tabby and work our way up through tuxedos, blues, whites, all the way to the rarest cats on the planet. By the end, you'll never look at your cat's coat the same way again. So what's the big deal with cat colours? We laugh at these colour stereotypes as cute little jokes, but they have real consequences. For example, did you know black cats are actually the most common cat colour in the world? And yet, yeah, they're the least adopted in shelters, and the most likely to be euthanised. What kind of cat racism is that? I'll explain the real reason why a little bit later, but this shows you how colour kind of shapes destiny. So understanding this isn't just trivia, it's about being a better cat parent. And the core of it all starts with a simple genetic puzzle. Think of cat genetics like a printer with only two ink cartridges, a black one called eumelanin and a red one called pheomelanin. Every cat colour you've ever seen, tabbies, calicos, torties, even silvers, is just a remix of those two inks. Here's a twist. The gene that decides between black and red is linked to sex. It lives on the X chromosome. Quick biology refresher. Females have two X chromosomes, XX, so their printer can load both inks at once. That's how you get mosaics like calicos and tortoise shells. Males only have one X chromosome, XY, so they usually get just one ink cartridge, orange or black, but not both. That's why calicos are almost always female, and why a male calico is such a genetic lottery ticket. It means something unusual happened, like an extra X chromosome. So now that we've cracked the science, let's decode the archetypes, the stories humans have told about cat colours for thousands of years. People call tabbies ordinary cats, like they're the default skin in a video game. And in a way, they are. Genetically, tabby is the original blueprint. Every domestic cat carries tabby DNA. And even solid cats often flash faint ghost stripes in sunlight if you look close enough. It all comes down to the agouti gene, which controls how light and dark pigment bands along each hair strand. That's what creates the four main tabby looks. Tiger-like stripes, swirling bullseyes, spotted leopard dots, or the subtle salt and pepper ticked coat. And sometimes these stripes break apart into spots giving us cats like the Bengal or Egyptian male, miniature leopards with the same tabby blueprint underneath. And then there's that M on the forehead. Science says it's just pigment distribution, but stories say otherwise. In Islamic legend, the prophet Muhammad honoured his beloved tabby by marking it. In Christian folklore, the Virgin Mary blessed a tabby that comforted the baby Jesus. So the stereotype of ordinary, not really. Those stripes are camouflage perfected by evolution, passed down from wild cats to the muggies in our homes. Tabbies aren't common because they're plain, they're common because nature made them perfect. The stereotype says black cats bring bad luck. That one myth has followed them around for centuries, and it still costs them homes today. The science is much simpler. Black coats come from one pigment, eumelanin dialed all the way up. No tricks, no mystery, just maxed out melanin. But here's a twist. Those same genes may offer an advantage. Researchers think the mutation that makes cats jet black may do more than change fur. It might also help them resist certain diseases, even ones similar to HIV in humans. In other words, evolution may have turned shadow into armour. But humans, we didn't see armour, we saw omens. In medieval Europe, black cats were tied to witches, blamed for misfortune and feared in the firelight. That fear still lingers today. Shelters report black cats as often overlooked, despite being just as affectionate as any other cat. And then, if you look east, the story suddenly flips. In Japan, a woman with a black cat was thought to attract more suitors. Shopkeepers placed black Maniko Niko figurines at their doors to ward off illness, and sailors believed a black cat on board could calm storms and keep spirits away. Same fur, same genes, but instead of curses, they saw blessings. So when you see a black cat cross your path, you're not looking at an omen, you're looking at a survivor wrapped in midnight, carrying centuries of human imagination on its back. The stereotype says orange cats all share one brain cell, and the internet has the memes to prove it. The genetics explain part of the story. The orange pigment, pheomelanin, lives on the X chromosome. Males have one X, so a single copy is enough to turn them ginger. Females have two X's, so they need a double helping. That's why around 80% of orange cats are boys. And here's a surprise. Personality surveys suggest orange males really do skew more social and affectionate. 
Some researchers think easygoing males had an advantage when they lived close to people in the past. Others say it's just their antics are so noticeable that we remember them more. Either way, orange cats have earned their reputation as the lovable clowns of the cat world. They don't actually have fewer brain cells, but they sure act like it sometimes, and that's exactly why we adore them. The internet says tuxedo cats are clever con artists in formal wear, always up to something. And honestly, they do look the part. The science is pretty simple. Their patchy coats come from the white spotting gene. It tells some pigment cells not to migrate during development, leaving white gaps. A little white spotting gives socks or mittens, and a stronger dose, you get a full tuxedo. Here's a twist. Tuxedo cats have strutted right into pop culture as the slick tricksters. Felix the cat, Sylvester chasing Tweety, even Simon, a real life ship's cat who earned a medal for bravery at sea. Cat parents swear tuxedos are sharper, funnier, and more mischievous. Science hasn't proved it, but when you look that dapper, every antic feels a little more dramatic. So while the gene just paints in patches, we can't help but see personality in the pattern. Bicolors aren't just cats in suits, they're the tricksters who make us laugh while looking good doing it. White cats are mystical, like little ghosts gliding through the house. Their snowy coats aren't really a colour at all. They're the result of the dominant white gene, which masks every pattern underneath like a fresh coat of paint. But those same genes often affect hearing. White cats with two blue eyes are deaf up to 80% of the time. Why? Because pigment cells, called melanocytes, don't just colour fur and eyes. Also help the inner ear form. If you block those cells, the ear can't fully form. That's why cats with one blue eye and one gold eye are often deaf only on the blue side. You can literally see the genetics in their senses. Folklore fills in the rest. In Turkey, the white angora is treated like a national treasure. Elsewhere, white cats have been linked to omens, spirits, and even guardians from another world. So while their coats look otherworldly, their story is a mix of hard science and human imagination. Exactly why white cats feel so magical. Grey cats are calm, wise, even a little aristocratic, like they know something we don't. The genetics explain the look. Grey cats aren't a new colour at all. They're just black cats with the dilution gene. That gene changes how pigment clumps inside each hair. Black softens into smoky grey. Fiery orange fades into cream. It's nature turning down the contrast. And here's the twist. Entire breeds have been built on this softened look. The Russian Blue, Chatru, and British Shorthair are celebrated for their silvery coats and dignified presence. Owners swear they're gentler, more loyal, more serene. And again, science hasn't proven that link. But when a cat looks like a little philosopher, it's hard not to treat them like one. So whether it's genetics or projection, grey cats radiate balance. If orange cats are chaos, blue cats are calm, the old souls, the quiet thinkers, the soft-voiced aristocrats of the feline world. Dilute cats are softer, not just in colour, but also in personality. The genetics explains why their coats look washed in watercolour. The dilution gene changes how pigment clumps inside each hair. When pigment granules are big and dense, you get bold colours like black and orange and rich torty. But when the gene scatters those granules into tiny dots, the colours fade. Black turns to smoky blue, orange to cream, and tortoise shell flames into lilac and peach. You can see it right in the families as well. A black cat can have a grey sibling. An orange tabby can have a cream-coloured sister. It's the same DNA pigments, just remixed into pastels. And because their colours look so delicate, people often project that softness onto their personalities. Owners often describe them as gentler, more reserved, almost dreamier than their bold-coloured cousins. Is it genetics or just the story we tell when we look at them? Hard to say. What's certain is that dilute cats are rare, striking and unforgettable, like secret watercolour paintings brought to life. Calicos and torties are fiery divas, cats with tortitude. So the genetics explains their patchwork. The orange gene sits on the X chromosome, females have two, so some cells one X switches off, and in others the opposite does. That's how you get coats that look like quilts, patches of black here and orange there. Add the white spotting gene and you've got a calico. Without it, the same process makes a tortoise shell's marbled fire. Here's a twist though, almost every calico or tortoise is female. Males need an extra X chromosome, XXY instead of XY to pull it off. That makes male calicos genetic unicorns, one in thousands, and usually sterile. And then there's that reputation. Owners insist that these cats are bold, sassy, and fiercely independent. 
And while science hasn't proven tortitude, when you wear a coat that loud, maybe you just live up to the legend. So whether it's science, myth or sheer personality, calicos and torties stand out. They're cats, stitched from fire, luck and a whole lot of attitude. Siamese and their cousins are divas, loud, clingy and impossible to ignore. The genetics explains their striking coats. Pointed cats carry a mutation in a pigment gene that only works in cooler parts of their body. Their warm middle core stays pale, while the tips, their ears, paws, tail and face actually darken. That's why Siamese kittens are born almost pure white, and as they grow, their ink develops wherever their body runs cold. Here's a twist, their personalities are just as unforgettable as their colours. Siamese don't just meow, they will narrate your life. Broadway style. Ragdolls on the other hand flip the script, going limp in your arms like furry noodles. And Himalayans fall somewhere in between, looking glamorous while soaking up affection. So whether they're loud divas or floppy cuddle puddles, pointed cats prove that genetics can shape not just how a cat looks, but how we imagine their personality. Their science is written on their sleeves, literally. At first glance, these cats look solid, black, silver, golden. Ordinary, right? In smoke and shaded cats, pigment only colours the tips of each hair, while the base stays white. So the moment they move the fur parts and light hits the undercoat, suddenly what looks flat shimmers like smoke or mist. The effect ranges from subtle to dazzling. Smoke cats appear dark until they roll or stretch, flashing pale underlayers. Shaded cats, like the famous chinchilla Persian, seem to sparkle, silver, gold or even platinum, because only the very ends of their fur are tipped in colour. It doesn't change the cat's personality one bit, but it completely changes how we see them. These cats don't just exist, they perform. That's why people call them mystical, luxurious or even royal. Unlike white cats, whose coats are masked by the dominant white gene, albinos produce no pigment at all. Their fur is completely colourless, even their eyes give it away. Without melanin in the iris, light reflects back, making them look pale blue or even pinkish. That lack of pigment makes them extra sensitive to sunlight in both their skin and their eyes, but it doesn't make them fragile. Albino cats can live just as long, happy and playful as any other cat. They just come with a little extra sparkle. Because they're so rare, people have always wrapped them in myth. In some places, they were seen as omens. In others, protectors. In truth, they're simply one of nature's rarest roll of the dice outcomes. Cats who slip through the cracks of the color palette. From the tabby, the blueprint of every cat, to the albino, the true ghost. This is a spectrum of feline color. Science and story woven together in fur. So we've decoded the science and questioned the myths. Now let's turn that knowledge into your three-step toolkit for being a better cat parent. Firstly, look past the label. When you're adopting, forget the myths. That quiet black cat in the corner isn't bad luck. He might just be shy and waiting for a gentle hand. And tortoises aren't always sassy. Judge the individual, not the label. You could miss out on the love of your life. Tailor your care to their coat. This is critical. A pure white cat with two blue eyes has an up to 80% chance of being deaf. This means you need to use visual cues and not just sounds. They're also prone to sunburn. Knowing their colour genetics directly impacts their health and safety. And lastly, embrace their stereotype as enrichment. Use those cliches for good. Is your orange cat a chaotic good agent of mayhem? Great, that's a sign he needs more enrichment. Try puzzle feeders. Is your calico a sassy queen? She probably craves vertical space where she can rule her kingdom from above. Use their natural tendencies as a guide to what makes them happy. So the next time you look at your cat, you won't just see a colour, you'll see a story written in their genes. You'll see the history, the folklore and the incredible science that makes them who they are. If you want more cat science, check out this video next.